Hey everybody, it's Jeff from New York and today we're back in Las Vegas on the Las Vegas Strip. We're going to check out the Win and Encore All You Can Eat Buffet. I love the Win and Encore. I think they're two of the classiest properties here on the Las Vegas Strip. But put class and buffet in the same sentence? I don't know if you can do that, but we're going to see if the Win and Encore can pull it off. Now, my initial plan was, I believe it's a Sunday evening, early Sunday evening here in Las Vegas, and I planned on doing the dinner buffet, and I just walked in at around 7 o'clock and realized that there was a long line, and they told me the wait was going to be about two hours, and that the buffet closed at 9 o'clock, which uh, didn't leave me too much time to eat if my wait was going to be two hours. Now, it's unlike me not to have a backup plan, but I didn't have a backup plan this evening, and I didn't know what to do with myself for the first half of the evening, so I decided, well, maybe I'll wait online and see if it actually moves quickly. By the way, as I mentioned, I really do love the Win and Encore, as well as the attractions and shops and lounges and restaurants here, and lots more to come from the Win and Encore in future videos here on the New York channel, so stay tuned. I always found Steve Wynn a fascinating person, and obviously he's had a heavy hand in shaping modern-day Las Vegas, and the Wynn Resort, obviously named after him, was his uh, last hurrah as far as building a hotel and casino here on the Strip, and I think it's the crown jewel of just about everything he's designed in his past. It's just a beautiful place. After waiting online for about half an hour, I decided there was not gonna be enough time for me to eat. I decided to come back the next day and this time make a reservation. But I quickly found out that the buffet here at the Wynn and Encore doesn't take reservations. They have what's called priority seating, which is premium. So I had to pay an extra 10 or $15 just to make what I consider a reservation but it did get me in right away the next day. And uh, by the way, it was a lunch that I went to uh, this time, not dinner. That being said, I learned that most of the buffets here have the same arrangement with this priority seating thing. So if you're uh, planning on coming to Vegas and doing the buffet thing, I strongly suggest you pay that extra price or you're gonna be in line for several hours. And uh, as far as other restaurants, I strongly suggest you make reservations everywhere you go here in town right now because it's just, the waits are just too long. Anyway, I'm finally here. The place is gorgeous and I know I called it a lunch, but it's really called brunch. They have breakfast, brunch, and dinner. I'm starved. Let's go check this buffet out, shall we? By now you guys know how I do these buffet videos. I kind of do a flyby just to check everything out and then I know what they have and I come back and help myself to what I'm in the mood for. So let's check everything out right now. First up we have smoked salmon and some fixings along with bagels and then next the usual shrimp cocktail with lemon and cocktail sauce. And then we have some marinated mussels with two types of sauces, tartar sauce and roumelade sauce. Next up we have some sushi and all types of sushi rolls and everything is being made fresh right in front of you behind the counter here. Next up we have some fixins and sides if you decided to take some of that sushi and sushi rolls including edamame, uh, some crab salad, and some Korean style kimichi. And of course all different kinds of dipping stuff for your sushi including uh, fresh ginger and wasabi and some sauces. Next to that is some Chinese food including uh, vegetable pot stickers, some shrimp dishes, we have some spring rolls and you know, the usual Chinese fare. There's some Chinese soups and then we have dan dan noodles not sure what that is it looks like lo mein to me and we have some pork fried rice and some black bean chicken i soon realized the layout was kind of weird or i jumped on the wrong end of the line here so i went to the beginning of the other end of the buffet and found that there was um, some watermelon some pineapple some fruit salad there's also something called a spicy blt salad and an antipas salad and a regular green salad this section also had to build your own yogurt parfait for the healthy brunch eaters here we have a Caesar salad with all the fixins. ins 
interestingly enough, more healthy food. Hmm. Where's the beef? And here we have some strawberry and lemon water, hibiscus orange tea, as well as guava pineapple juice. Next up, homestyle chicken noodle soup, some vegetable soup, hominy grits, as well as steel cut oatmeal. Then we have a charcuterie area with fresh cut sliced Italian meats and cheeses and some sides as well. Then we have a nice selection of artisanal breads to go with those meats and cheeses or perhaps anything else you might be getting here online. Then we have some codfish, some fisherman's stew, we have shrimp and grits, and fish and chips with malt vinegar powder. I'm not sure what malt vinegar powder is, but... And uh, let's see, we have some Maine Lobster Eggs Benedict as well as Plain Old Eggs Benedict. Next up we have a pizza section. We have, uh, let's see, truffle mushroom pizza. We have a meat lover's pizza. We have a breakfast stromboli as well as a plain old cheese pizza, which looks really good. Next up it looks like a Mexican station with some scrambled egg and chorizo sausage. We have pork carnitas tamales. We have some chicken enchiladas, which is completely empty and an empty pan. This Mexican station looks like it could use a little oven. Next up we have some Pollo Chili Verde. We have these which look like some kind of deconstructed taco. They look really good. Pollo Asado. We have some corn tortillas. We have patatas bravas hash browns and some Mexican street corn. I love Mexican street corn. Next up we have all kinds of breakfast items including a pancake station where they're made right in front of you. We have scrambled eggs, a red velvet waffle with Nutella, a banana french toast. We have something called the chef's special menu. It looks like a Cinnabon with uh, bananas fosters on top. We also have some country biscuits and gravy, some more artisanal breads. We have breakfast hash browns. We have breakfast tater tots with bacon and eggs. Not your plain old fashioned tater tots. These are fancy schmancy ones. Hickory smoked bacon. We have some truffle spinach dip as well as breakfast sausage links. Next up we have some healthy sides along with some comfort food. We have sautéed squash. We have something else again called Chef's Special Menu. I guess it's a mystery side. We have a four cheese macaroni and cheese. I'm going to get some of that. We have herb jasmine rice as well as olive oil and chive mashed potatoes. It all sounds good. Next up, some people's favorite, the carving station. We have some dry rub rotisserie chicken. I had to read this one twice. Herb roasted airline turkey breast. I'm just not into airline food, so I don't know why it's called that. Slow cooked pork loin. We have some honey glazed ham. Different kinds of sauces. We have applesauce, creamy horseradish sauce, assorted mustards, a plain old horseradish, and a chimichurri sauce. Then we have some Polish rope sausage. I guess that's just kielbasa. Um, there's some chicken apple sausage and barbecue brisket with some onions. That looks really good as well. This is Mitzi the Rubber Ducky Showgirl who shows up on all my Vegas videos. As most of you know, there are hidden mascots or some of you call them Easter eggs in my videos. Mitzi shows up in all the Vegas ones. Sometimes she's easy to spot, other times she's quite elusive. So keep your eyes open while watching the video. If you spot her, note the time in the comments below, and if you're the first one, you'll get a shout out on an upcoming video. And a shout out to Deborah Camacho, who found Mitzi the Rubber Ducky Showgirl in my latest Las Vegas video, The Bellagio Room and Pool Tour. And she also found Clarice the Miss America Crown in my latest Atlantic City video, Resorts. Nice job, Deborah. And this is all starting to look familiar. It must be where I walked in. And we're just going to walk through one more time here just to see if there's anything new. And then I'm going to start loading up my first plate.
I almost started to load up my first plate and then I realized I totally forgot the dessert station. So let's check those out, do a flyby, and then I'll load up my first plate. Let's see, first we have a no sugar added marble cake. No thank you on that one. We have an assortment of bunt cakes with chocolate or white chocolate raspberry. That sounds really good. We have little tiny s'mores cones. They look kind of cute. Assorted vegan desserts, including exotic tapioca, cherry panna cotta, and sea salt chocolate tart. And that all looks really good. And what do we have here? Assorted mousse cups, including a choice of chocolate vanilla, vanilla berries, mango vanilla raspberry, key lime, and coffee hazelnut. That sounds good. And of course, creme brulee, which is one of my favorite desserts. Then there's petite pastries, including tiramisu, lemon meringue tart, chocolate dome, and pistachio cake. And vegan tapioca pudding. The Wind Buffet also has a crepes made to order station. And we have some warm caramel churros. We have raspberry beignets. Those are not beignets, those are jelly donuts. If you want a real beignet, go to New Orleans. Uh, what else do we have? We have a little lava cakes. Those look good. In the background, you can see a pastry chef hard at work making sure all this stuff stays fresh and good looking, which it does. And then we have some apple cranberry cobbler as well as warm butterscotch bread pudding. Here we have some oatmeal raisin cookies. And this is all part of a make your own gelato sundae section. chocolate and vanilla frozen custard. Now these look interesting and unusual. We have a rose tea with raspberry donut and a chocolate espresso with chocolate donut. Now that finally pretty much covers everything here at the Win Buffet, so I'm gonna get ready and load up my first plate. Let's get going. So for starters, I'm gonna make my own little charcuterie plate here just to kick things off with a antipasto. One thing I've learned about making these buffet videos is I cannot make it through the entire buffet if I give myself normal portions. So it's just a slice of this or a piece of that, a teaspoon of this or a tablespoon of that, just to taste everything. Because if I use normal sized portions, I'll never make it through halfway. Besides, I'd like to eat a little of a lot rather than a lot of a little. That makes sense, right? Hey, if you're enjoying this buffet video, why don't you subscribe to the New York channel if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel out. Again, not a huge plate, just a little of this, a little of that, just for tasting, and there's plenty of stations up there, and I can make as many trips as I want, so this is perfect for my starter plate. So to kick things off, I have some salami, I have some, I believe it's capicola, 
couple of gherkins, I have some cranberries and uh, some sharp cheese and some cheddar cheese and a croissant and I don't know what that other bread is. It looks like it might be stuffed with something. I'm about to find out. I believe it was stuffed with like an apple filling, so it's more of a dessert. It really doesn't belong on this plate, but it is what it is. And it's kind of early in the day here in Las Vegas, so I have my unsweetened iced tea. Not that it matters, I don't mind starting the day off with a cocktail, quite honestly, but I've got a lot of work to do here in town today, so I'm starting the day off with an unsweetened iced tea to accompany everything I'm eating. Okay, so that's prosciutto, that's not capicola. And uh, I have to say the temperature of the items on this plate are perfect for a charcuterie. Uh, the meats shouldn't be really ice cold because then you really can't taste it. And cheese should always be pretty much a little bit above room temperature because you can't taste cheese at all if it's cold. And uh, they managed to pull it off here in a buffet. This is something hard to pull off at your house, keeping it this temperature. I don't know how they do it, but they managed to do it here. Of course, if the meats and cheeses are always too cold, you could just let them sit on your plate for a few moments and they'll come up in temperature. Now I know some of you are thinking, hey, Jeff from New York, it's a freaking slice of salami and a hunk of cheese. I don't care what temperature it is. Just finish up and let's get back to that buffet. And to you, my friend, I say, this is why I eat alone. Next up, some fresh sushi and a shrimp cocktail. And I had to go back to try this New York City roll. It wouldn't be a New York video without a New York City roll. I couldn't pass it up. It consists of smoked salmon, cream cheese, caper mayo, and everything bagel seasoning. Sounds like a lox and bagel to me. Let's see what it tastes like. Did I mention how beautiful this place is? And there we have it, small plate number two. We have some shrimp cocktail. We have that New York roll, which sounds really good. I'm dying to try that. We have a California roll, and we also have that shrimp thing with uh, rice underneath it. And of course, I like my shrimp cocktail as well as the sushi with some fresh lemon juice on top. So I'm gonna squeeze some lemon juice on top of all of this and try it out. Now, if anything at this buffet should be ice cold and fresh, it should be the uh, shrimp and sushi, and it is. It's very fresh, very cold, really, really good. Now, I'm saving that New York roll for last because it's something that I'm really dying to try, and I have to tell you, it was delicious, and I felt like going back for a couple more of those, but I'm going to stick to my rule of just a little of everything. Next up, one of my favorite buffet stations, Chinese. 
I'm going to try some of this Dan Dan noodles. Not sure what that is, but it looks like plain old lo mein to me, and that's fine with me. Some pork fried rice. The pork fried rice does have egg in it, and you guys know I don't eat eggs, but I can pick around it. It's uh, one of those things where it's worth eating a little bit of egg if you get a lot more pork and rice. So that's, that's the deal here. I had a little camera issue at the Chinese station here at the Wynn Buffet, and so you can pretty much see what I picked up while I was up there. I was going to fly back to Vegas and reshoot that whole Chinese scene, but that seemed a little inconvenient, so this is what I got. Now I know this is going to sound a little weird, but I like my lo mein on the hot side. I like it a little bit greasy and very flavorful. Uh, this was none of those. I believe the word foodies use is meh, but no big deal. There's lots more on this plate that I can enjoy. And again, just a teaspoon or tablespoon of everything. The pork fried rice, pretty much the same. It wasn't hot. It was almost room temperature and uh, not so much tasty. So. I don't know, maybe the flame went out underneath the Chinese uh, station, who knows, but food wasn't hot and uh, so far not so tasty. The spring roll on the other hand was perfect. It was hot, it was crispy on the outside and those fresh vegetables inside, the flavor just came bursting out. I also picked up some duck sauce or some sweet and sour sauce for the spring roll as well as the wonton and uh, I really enjoyed the spring roll. The wonton, like the spring roll, was really good. It was, uh, I believe they steam them and then they fry them and there's pork stuffed inside and it was just perfect. I really enjoyed the wonton as well. Finally, I have this shrimp thing. I'm not quite sure what it's called and I should have been paying attention, but um, I made this mistake before. I had this at another buffet. I'm not sure if it's one that I've done in the past or if it's a buffet coming up on the New York Channel in the future, but I had one of these shrimp things before. I did not like it. Um, I got one here on my plate today, not realizing it's the same one that I didn't like at the other buffet, and I tasted it, and once again, it's gross. I'm not sure what it is. It's stuffed with shrimp, but it's, it's just disgusting. And um, I think I learned my lesson. I know what they look like now, and I will avoid them in the future. That's all I have to say. I'm not saying that, you know, the, the restaurant screwed up. I'm just saying I do not care for those. Did I mention how beautiful this place was? By the way, don't forget to check out the New York Community Room. It's a place, there's a tab right at the top of this channel here. It's a tab where you can learn all new stuff about Las Vegas, Atlantic City, Orlando, New Orleans, New York City, uh, stuff about me, the next Live from New York show. Every, all that information is available on the Community tab here on the New York channel. Make sure you check it out regularly. Thank you. Next up, I'm going to stop off at a, one or two different stations. The first is the pizza station. I'm going to try this truffle mushroom pizza. I'm not a huge mushroom pizza fan, but the truffle is what's interesting me here. So I'm going to try this out. And as you can see, I'm still struggling with my one-handed buffet trickery here. Uh, it's not easy holding a camera with one hand, a plate with another, and cutting a pizza with the other. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I have three arms, but I'm putting all three to use here, and uh, it's a struggle. You guys know I love fish and chips, and I've been thinking about it since my first plate when I sat down, and I said eventually I'm going to get up and try one of those uh, fish and chip baskets, and this is my opportunity. Another thing I've been thinking about while eating my other dishes was this taco thing. And, you know, some of these dishes, they all look the same when you come to these buffets. But once in a while, you'll come across something unusual and different. And this taco thing is definitely one of those. Dine or try it out.
Wow, this place is beautiful. So this trip, I uh, picked up the truffle mushroom pizza. I picked up a small slice of that. I did pick up the uh, Mexican street corn. Uh, you didn't see me pick it up, but I actually did, as you can see here. Uh, it comes in different ways, sometimes on the cob like it is here. Other times it's loose corn or loose corn kernels. I picked up that taco dish, which I'm dying to try, as well as some fish and chips. The truffle mushroom pizza was absolutely delicious. It was just bursting with flavor, very earthy between those mushrooms and the truffles, but it was a good earthy and I really enjoyed this slice of pizza. It's a small slice, but it was a good slice nonetheless. Uh, the crust could have been, it was the perfect thickness, but it could have been done a little bit more. Um, but I can't complain. The pizza was fantastic. As far as fish and chips, I really enjoyed this equally as much as the pizza. The fish was delicious. It was flaky, juicy on the inside, crispy on the outside, fried perfectly. As far as the french fries or the chips, there was only three or four of them, not too many, but they were okay. They were all right, but the standout here was the fish which it should be, and it was delicious. Again, I could go up for another two or three of these little baskets, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. Just a little bit of everything, I'm sticking to my rule. Then there was a the Mexican street corn, which I love Mexican street corn, as I mentioned. Uh, this one's on the cob, and if you don't know what Mexican street corn is, it's a very buttery, cheesy, fresh cilantro, spicy kind of corn, usually made on the street in Mexico, which is where it gets its name, obviously. Um, very flavorful and spicy, and I love this, uh, this dish. The flavors are enhanced with a little lemon, or even better, a little lime sprinkled on top. Next up was this uh, taco creation, and the wagon wheel was made out of cornmeal, kind of like a Frito. I put that on the side for the moment, but the, uh, the taco itself was very fresh. Everything was good on it. All the fixings of a regular taco on top of a crispy corn tortilla. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I sprinkled a little lime on top. Uh, they do use cilantro here at uh, the Wind Buffet, and uh, I'm, I've become a fan of cilantro. Some people don't like it, so that's something to consider, but uh, it made all this stuff stand out and be really fresh. Next up, we're heading to the carving station, but first, we're going to stop off for some mac and cheese. I asked for a very thin slice of baked ham and I'm heading towards that barbecue brisket next. A little odd juice sauce for the brisket. And there you have plate number, I don't know, five, six, I lost count, but it's got the uh, barbecue brisket. It's got, I asked for a thin slice of ham. It looked thin when he sliced it, but now it's starting to look a little bit thick. I'm just a little bit too much for me. And uh, the baked macaroni or the mac and cheese, it's supposed to have four different cheeses. I'm looking forward to tasting that. 
This barbecue brisket's like butter. I mean, it's just uh, falling apart as my fork touches it, and it's uh, not too sweet. It's perfect. It's a nice barbecue flavor without a ton of sugar or sweetness to it. The ham is good as well. Just like the brisket, it's got just the right amount of sweetness on the outside, and it's not salty. Sometimes you get salty ham, and it's just not good, but this is perfect. And now for the mac and cheese, it's okay. I mean, I've never had really a good mac and cheese at a buffet. Um, the only exception being the Hard Rock in Atlantic City. That, that mac and cheese was awesome. Um, but this is okay, I've had worse, definitely had worse. It's, it's cheesy, but it's just uh, kind of reminds me of like the frozen variety. And it's got peas in it, and I do like peas. Not, not a lot, but I do like peas in mac and cheese. It does add a, just a tiny touch of sweetness. Hey, if you get a chance, check out the New York Merchandise Store. There's a link in the description below. Lots of cool New York swag like uh, t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts and caps and duffel bags and mugs and, well, you name it. You'll probably find it there at the New York Merchandise Store. And it does uh, help support the channel. Check it out if you get a chance. Thanks. So now I'm back for some dessert and I've already picked out one of those small lava cakes and I've got a caramel filled churro. And uh, I'm going to take one of these creme brulees. I love creme brulee. These look delicious. And I picked out one of those tiny s'more ice cream cones. They're not really ice cream, but they look like ice cream cones. And I'm going to take one of these pastries as well. First, I'm gonna try this caramel-filled uh, cinnamon toasted churro, which looks really good, and it's also the easiest thing on this plate to eat right now. Again, I'm trying to eat with a camera in my hand, so I go for the easy stuff first. This is really good. The outside is crunchy, and the inside is filled with that creamy caramel, and it's extremely sweet and cinnamony, but uh, what's to be expected? It's a dessert, right? Next up is this petite lava cake, and I'm only going to take a forkful or a mouthful of each of these items uh, simply because, well, the sugar's really going to do me in for the day, and it's way too early for that to happen. So just a little bite of each just to see what they taste like. And now perhaps one of my favorites is the creme brulee, and creme brulee has been around for hundreds of years, and I have this story made up in my head that somewhere in France hundreds of years ago, someone burnt the custard in the restaurant, and since then, for years, everyone around the world has been trying to copy that, trying to get that hard shell top, that sugar caramelized top on their creme brulee perfect. Hey, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And by the way, this creme brulee is delicious. Next up is this cute little s'more ice cream cone. For those of you who don't know, s'mores are uh, basically sandwiches. They're two pieces of graham crackers with uh, melted chocolate and melted marshmallow in between. And what they did here was they made it look like an ice cream cone with the marshmallow on top, the chocolate, and the graham cracker cone. Uh, looks like a great idea. It looks very cute. Wonder what it tastes like. It actually tastes like a s'more. Everything is coming through. The graham cracker, the dark chocolate, and the marshmallow. It all tastes really good. This tiny pastry actually looks like candy. It looks so decadent. It's got dark chocolate and white chocolate on top, and I have no idea what's inside. We're going to check it out right now. Ah, it's neither pastry or candy. It's a mousse. Oh my god, I'm going to go into a sugar coma before I leave this table. Alrighty, just one more thing before I call it a day here at the Wind Buffet. Some frozen custard and some toppings. So I got some vanilla frozen yogurt and I chose three toppings. I believe they were fruity pebbles, rainbow sprinkles, and chocolate chips. Don't ask, it just seemed to strike me while I was up there. Let's see what it all tastes like. This looks like something Rainbow Bright would order. And oh my God, it's sweet, but what did I expect? Oh, 
Alrighty, that's it for me today. Not another bite. After I got up, I decided to give you guys a little walkthrough of the Wynn Buffet here. And from the Wynn Buffet website, it says, The Buffet at Wynn Las Vegas redefines the breakfast, brunch, or dinner experience with a feast of options including an all-new Eggs Benedict Station and a Latin Street Food Station. Among the 16 tantalizing food kitchens designed by executive chef Jason Duarte. All the classics are here too, from butcher inspired cuts to shrimp cocktail, sushi, and more. The Buffet at Wynn Las Vegas will satisfy every craving. More than 90 delicious dishes, including a wide range of made to order choices, all served in a bright and airy atmosphere. It's the perfect time to discover the all new buffet at Wynn Las Vegas. The buffet is open for breakfast 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., just one hour, and then brunch starts at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and dinner from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., and it's closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Breakfast is $38.99, brunch is $45.99, and dinner is $69.99, a little bit more expensive on the weekends. And again, if you plan on doing dinner, I strongly suggest priority seating, which I discussed earlier in this video. And that, my friends, is it for the Wynn Buffet today. I need to uh, take a long walk on the strip to uh, walk off some of these calories. What'd you think of the Wynn Buffet? Did I pass on stuff that you would have taken? What'd you think of my decisions? You know, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the visit here today. And more importantly, I know there's a lot of vloggers doing buffet videos out there. Let me know what you think of mine and how it compares to others. Uh, what can I do to change it to make it better? Or uh, do you like it the way it is? And let me know in the future because I do plan on doing more of these buffet videos in the future. And I want to make sure you guys like them. So leave comments below. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, comment, ask some questions, and most importantly, subscribe by clicking on the button on the left. You can visit all of my New York videos by clicking on the top right, or check out my videos on other favorite places to visit by clicking on the bottom right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the city.